Uh, hello everyone. Uh, here in Jamaica. So I'm here making breakfast this morning. So that's my pigeon right there. He's eating breakfast. See? He flies in every morning and we give him breakfast and he disappears for the rest of the day. That's my dog, one of the puppies. And this is my outdoor kitchen. Built this all myself, built it out of stone. See? Makeshift, makeshift top, you know? Keep the sun out. This, this is easy to make, actually. This, this um, wood here is cedar. You know, cedar um, is very good. A lot of culture, they use it for a lot of different reasons. But what I like about the cedar out here is that it expands and contracts. Based on the weather, you know, if it's humid, it will expand. And if it's dry, it contracts. So we use it for a lot of things like windows, doors. and It's also good for, um, you know, like if you're building a closet or something to keep. Worms won't eat it. You know, termite won't eat the wood, right? Keep away a lot of roaches and and pests. So that's the beauty of the cedar, right? So I have this in the outdoor kitchen, and as you can see, I have a huge pot. I got my outside fire going, wood fire, some special wood I got got from the top of the hill. You can see the top of the hill. I'll go and get get my wood. I don't kill trees. I just wait till the trees are dry, and then you know, bring them down to using my outside fire. So let's go take a look at this peanut porridge and see what it looks like. So the peanut porridge. Before we do that, the peanut porridge I make here we call them we call it cereal. It's made from fresh coconut. You blend the coconut, blend the peanut, uh, green banana, peel the green banana, blend it, and um, also green plantain, blend them together, and some other secret rest ingredients that I'm not going to divulge. All right, there's my neem plant in my neem tree right there. As you can see, before I show you my peanut porridge, check out this neem. I plant this tree like a couple years ago. Look at all the, not neem, meringue. This is my, my, my meringue tree. Look at all the dry pods. It's gotten real big last couple of years and it's blossoming. Look at all these uh, meringue pods. All right? And the um, meringue is You name it. The vitamins in the moringa is powerful. Moringa is a very powerful um, herb. I use it for tea. I, I'll do a moringa tea tomorrow. Show you how it's made. Oh, so before I was, just, I was distracted, here's a root. We call this red root. We put in tonics. Just pull this out the ground. Oh, so now, as you can see, I'm all over the place. I'm in Jamaica, so you know, more relaxed. Let's look at this. Uh, peanut porridge. You have to stir it. You have to keep stirring it. It's a huge pot I have here. That's my uh, relative's baby. So, just in case you're wondering, my baby is the martial art. Well, I have my son here with me. But, Yes, this good, this good stuff, man. Look at the fire on it. Huh? Does it get any better than this? And this wood has a nice aroma to it. Peanut porridge, man. The best cereal in the world, man. A good stuff, man. Yes, man. This good stuff.
So when you're using wood fire to cook, you got to know what you're doing. Because wood fire is very, um, fire can get out of control. What we do, if I get out of control, you just pull some of the wood back to control the flow of the heat. See? Just pull some of the wood up. See? See, I'm filming and talking at the same time, so it's not perfect, but yeah, there you go. So I've just controlled the flow of my fire so you don't get out of control and burn the food. Once you start using wood fire to cook, you'll never go back to anything else. Food tastes completely different. Yes, and uh, naturally you do need a good steel pot or iron pot, right, to hold the heat. So this is a good time to check out the texture. You can see I don't use any milk just coconut, raw coconut blended up, no dairy products in this. It's going to, it's going to turn into a nice thick blend. Yep. Okay, so while we're waiting for um, the porridge, or the cereal to cook. Let's take a look at some of the uh, my plants, the trees that I planted. Everybody know this one. You see, we, over here we call it tuna. It's good for a lot of stuff. You can cook it, the younger parts, you know. Like here you can take it and strip it and slice it up. It's very good food. Ah, this part, this part here, as you can see, it's much fitter, more mature. If you have like back problems, you know, you can bake it, you know, and uh, bandage it to, you, to your back and it will pull out all the inflammation. That's one thing we use it for. This is my sweet sap plant, you know. You can see it's starting to bear. Yep. Gungo. This is a kind of a bean, peas. In my opinion, it's, it's better than the regular bees, beans. I planted this last year before I leave. And you can see now they're about to, they're starting to bloom. So, we'll get, uh, I'll get, I'll have peas when I come back. And here's the Aki tree, my favorite. One of my favorite, the Aki. So I have Aki all year round. This is, we have about four or five of the trees here. My June plum, we had a drought this summer. So it was really bad. All right, another Aki tree. These are cassava. Now there are two different types of cassava. There's one that was created by the natives. It's called sweet cassava. And there's another one that has poison in it that was created uh, I think it was by the, the Dutch, are they? Yeah, I think by the Dutch. Creating a lab for produced starch. It has a lot of poison in it. You don't eat that one. But this one is a sweet cassava which can be eaten. Oh, now here's one, another one of my favorite trees. A mango tree. And as you can see, there's mangoes all over it. And uh, I won't be here to enjoy any of it because I believe in a week. Uh, I planted this tree 10 years ago when I purchased the property for training and this is one of the first thing I did. Went and bought mango trees and planted them. So the mango trees are all over. This is called a sea grape. I used to love this tree as a kid. You know, guava. And we have guineps everywhere. So, let's go back now. That's a mini tour of uh, my training ground. So, uh, I love Gungu. 
gongo and rice as opposed to rice and peas I love gongo and rice look at all these guinea trees we'll do a guinea tour here we got guinea trees everywhere next year I'm gonna make guinea wine yep so that's a mini tour of the place all right but this is where I stay when I'm in JA Right in front of my house, you see nice papaya coming up, and these are pomegranate. You can see this one is already eaten out by the birds. I don't bother the birds if they want to eat, I let them eat. Everybody have to eat, man. Yes, man. I love this tree. This is my pride and joy. Okay, let's go back and take a look what the porridge is saying. So this is the peanut porridge now. Look what, look what it's turning out. Huh? This is good stuff, man. Nice brown color. Huh? So it's gonna simmer underneath the wood fire for another half an hour. Yep. Everything natural, even my spoon, I'm using a wooden spoon. Yeah. So I gotta cover him back up. Yeah. This is good stuff, man. Like I was saying, wood fires, once you get the flow of the wood and the oxygen passing through it, you be able to control it and, and slow cook your meal. You don't have to rush. You know, you think the uh, monks, Taoist monks or the Shaolin monks had gas? No, they were cooking like this. How they used to do it. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, peanut cereal. Let's see what it looks like. You can tell when this is ready. You know, because you'll smell it. See, I got all my preparation. I have my water, my molasses, yeah, it's good stuff, man. So, check this out. See the thickness, consistency. Look how, look at this. Man, wood fire, iron pot, peanut porridge. It doesn't get any better than this. So now we're going to take it off the, the fire. So we want it to get overcooked, you know. I already, I already turned my fire down by pulling it out a little bit. See this? This is how we turn our fire down out here. When you cook with wood fire, you just pull it out. That's how you turn your fire down. And so now I'm going to take it off. And I have my water ready. So now, take your porridge, cup, mix it around, and get my bowl. This is my monk bowl here. See? So when you eat this, you can stay in the sun all day. The sun doesn't bother you. And, and then take my molasses. <laughs> Voila! Ready to go, man. It's ready. It's time to taste this peanut porridge, man. Mm. This stuff looks good, man. It's uh, tasty. You might to taste it too, man. You cover it back up. Alright. And look at this. Ah, food from the gods.